Hello everyone. Well, we are focusing on women 40 plus. That is what we are catering to. Today's session is if someone is going through perimenopause or menopause, uh, how can you uh, manage or balance your hormones using naturopathy? You, talking about that, we have Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly is a naturopathic doctor from Seattle and Bastyr University. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelly, for joining me today. Hi, thank you for having me. And just a brief background about me. So I went to Seattle, Washington, and that's where Bastyr University is located. And I was there for four years, the four-year program. And then I did three years training after that. And following that three years training, then I moved to Encinitas, California, where I am practicing now. It's in the Northern um, part of San Diego area. So I've been in practice here since 2006. And my main specialty is using bioidentical hormones for men and women. And today the topic is gonna to be for women going through menopause. And so the question is, one of the questions is, when does that start? And the typical age that I start seeing women go through perimenopause, which is the transition into menopause, is usually in the mid forties. I know some have started in the thirties, which is actually too young, but for the most part, it starts in the mid forties all the way through even late fifties. And I know um, often they ask me, okay, what can I do? And that will cover later. But some of the symptoms that I see though for perimenopause or people going or women going through menopause, one is irregular menses. They say, oh, my menses has started sooner than it should or started later, later than it should. And oftentimes the menses is often heavy or can be clotting. And then the other symptoms that follow after that or may happen at the same time, hot flashes, night sweats, chills, change in moods where they say, oh, oh my goodness, I'm all of a sudden I'm getting more weepy or, or they may say I feel more irritable. And so those are often the common symptoms. And then other symptoms that might be reported during this perimenopause phase or after menopause is insomnia. And that's usually a big one and weight gain. And so they come to me and they're asking, what can I do? And so this is where We'll do testing and oftentimes I'll do blood testing and other ways that some people like to test through the urine or also salivary testing. And then we'll look at the results and then, then I'll go by symptoms, but also blood test results or salivary results or urinary results, looking at the hormones. And this is where we sit down and say, okay, this is what we need to do to help address. And it's usually hot flashes or night sweats. And so here in my office, I often use bioidentical hormones, whether it be something called bias, which is um, estriol and estradiol. And then we like to balance that with progesterone if they have a uterus. And if they don't have a uterus, then it's usually just a co combination of estrogen. And if needed, we'll give them testosterone. And that's the other common symptom that I often hear too is low libido. And so if needed, we'll give them some testosterone. And then there are other women where they don't want bioidentical hormones. And this is where I like to use herbs, nutrition, or just looking at diet. And had, I had one of my colleagues and what he did to help women go through menopause, especially with hot flashes and night sweats, all she did was work with nutrition. And so we actually set up a little study and we looked at women who just use nutrition versus women who wanted to be on bioidentical hormones. It was a small study that we did but we actually found out that the effect was almost the same where the women who were just changed their diet, actually it helped to minimize the hot flashes. But oftentimes the hot flashes, it is pretty intense. And so this is where we put them on some bioidentical hormones. And I don't know if there's anyone who has any questions, please just pop in and ask me any questions as I'm going through the, um, the presentation. Now, was there any, Anything specific that you wanted to ask at all? Yeah, I think I think it's fascinating um, that that you did a study that nutrition alone can help women get get over hot flashes and you said night sweats. The other uh, other uh, elephant in the room, which nobody wants to talk about, is low libido. Right, a lot of women go through that, and you you talked earlier about the progesterone. So anything that you you can help women and the whole point of this session is to give hope 
that you know yes naturopathy can help you right so so that's what i want to point out is talk about some of the topics which no one wants to talk about uh, in, in this forum and and use some even the simple study uh, that you have done it you know you can elaborate a little bit how did you change the diet of those women that's number one what what did they start taking as opposed to the bio identical hormones um, uh, you know, how many months did it take? Are they still continuing? So I think that's number one question. The second is, um, what do you suggest from a naturopathic point of view for low libido as well? Right. So in the study, it was um, over 10 years ago, but I remember we had at least 20, 20 participants. We divided them 10, or, you know, just diet alone, and then 10 with bioidentical hormones. And one of the things, the big change with diet, cutting the alcohol because a lot of these women like the red wine or, or just mixed drinks. And we found that just cutting the alcohol helped considerably. And the other big focus that we did was focusing on the liver because all the hormones have to be processed through the liver. And so she did some liver cleanses for these women as well. It wasn't this major detox program, but she had them on some liver supporting herbs. Milk thistle was probably the most common one. She also had them on beets. And then there was this liver cream that's called the toxinol. And that's actually made of artichoke and she had them use that too. And that was in the women where they were in the diet intervention group. And basically it was so it was just focusing on the liver, cutting out alcohol and eating whole foods. And so as far as whole foods, nothing processed, nothing canned, or at least minimize it. And that seemed to make a difference. And yes, it was a small study, only 10 people, but we found that the results were actually very close to those who were on the bioidentical hormones. And so those on the bioidentical hormones, no change was really made for, uh, you know, as far as diet or no focus on the liver. It was just give them some bioidentical hormones. And so, yeah, for it's women who don't want to be on bioidentical hormones, no diet, it can do a lot, but just changing your diet. And then what okay. was the other part? Yeah, so the, uh, so other question I want to ask is, you can change your diet. What about some of the herbs? You know, they have a, a lot of uh, research, at least I was researching like black cohosh, you know, some of the primrose oil, stuff like that. Do you, do you use herbs? That's question number one. Right. And, and, and this is not a medical rice. What are the general herbs, right? Black cohosh, most people are, more, are familiar with, and that's, and that's more from mild hot flashes. So if one has mild hot flashes, black cohosh, even criminals oil, sesame oil, flaxseed, those have estrogenic properties. And some women have taken licorice as well because that has estrogenic properties. But my only hesitancy when they're on licorice is they can raise blood pressure too. So we just have to be aware of that. They're taking that. And for libido, the herbs that I found that have helped with libido it, uh, one's a mushroom is cordyceps. Just taking some cordyceps has helped with libido. And I like it also because it's an adrenal support. Ashwagandha, it's a good adrenal support, but yet in some ways it can indirectly help their libido too. And then um, something called Tangat Ali, which is, I, I believe, the um, common name horny, jack, um, horny goat reed, but that has also been a big help for women who want a boost in libido too. Okay, and then uh, what about other uh, mental health issues, right? Women also go through anxiety during this anxiety, period. Anxiety, depression, and yes. there we know estrogen can help, but the B vitamins, B2, B6, B12, those are the ones that I like women to take because those B vitamins are what we call cofactors to help with neurotransmitters, which helps with moods, but also in some ways it helps with estrogen expression as well with these um with the b vitamins and vitamin d has also helped where that also helps the genes to to help make more estrogen but then research has found that too much vitamin d can actually do the opposite where it can actually lower estrogen where if the vitamin d level is very high but so nutrition can do a lot in helping with hormone balance and these we found it works well for mild hot flashes for mild night sweats for mild um, depression or anxiety. But then sometimes we do need to give them a little bit of estrogen. And the dosages range from 0 0.625 all the way up to, you know, five milligrams of estrogen. And when I prescribe estrogen, I like to do a combination of estradiol with estriol, where estriol is the weaker form of estrogen. 
So it's actually protective when we combine it together. And then, um, and then if I have a uterus, and I like to combine progesterone with it too. And usually it's given as a cream form. And then some women like a transdermal form, others like a trophy, but we don't really prescribe in capsule form because of the risk for clots. Okay, um, anything else you'd like to add uh, uh, from the naturopathic point of view? Any other therapies like, you know, there's a IV therapy like, uh, or any other therapies that you use, you know, that are not, that are kind of intravenous, intravenous therapies that you use for women who are going through hormone uh, imbalance or? There are, well, most of them, they like their B shots. So it's a combination of B12, but maybe um, something called B complex. So they get all the combination of the Bs because we know the when you combine these B vitamins together, it's a synergy where one plus one equals 10 versus if each one was given by itself. But usually though, for the most part, because of distance or just cost, instead of coming in for B12 shots, I just have them take, um, it's a mixture of the Bs and there's a good multivitamin that has all the Bs, or it's just something called B complex, or there's a product called B100, where it's an even ratio of all the B vitamins. And that in itself can help because it helps neurotransmitters and it also helps with expression of, um, with, for estrogen um, formation. Okay. Um, well, we have a visitor, uh, Leslie. Uh, Leslie, do you have any questions? Anything that you want to ask? You're welcome to do that from Dr. Kelly. You can unmute yourself if you want. You're on mute, Leslie. Do you have any questions? Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Uh, I just know that with uh, thyroid and hitting, you know, going, have gone through menopause, what do you recommend for like energy and, um, just feeling not so fatigued up here in the head. So well, that's a good point with perimenopause, menopause, oftentimes, yes, the thyroid is also affected. And so that's why we see the weight gain and decrease in energy and also it affects the sleep too. And so usually for thyroid support there, I like to give a little bit of armor thyroid or something called NP thyroid. Mm -hmm. And then for those who don't want to get on thyroid medication, there are really good thyroid supplements out there. They may have a little bit of iodine, selenium, which are cofactors to help the thyroid function. And then um, it was iodine, tyrosine, and um, I can't remember all the different herbs, but those are the main ingredients. And I don't know if I can mention products, but, but by now there's something called thyroid energy. And that's the one oh. that I like with okay. Well, this is a huge topic and, and uh, you know, weight gain is another problem for a lot of women in their um, mid age or mid forties, right? Uh, so, so what we, uh, any other general questions? Of course, this is not a medical advice. I just want to put a big disclaimer here for Dr. Kelly and for us, but uh, you can ask another question if you like, Leslie. Well, again, it, for me, it's the, it, it's like he was talking about, but it's the mental fog. Like, um, like when you wake up in the morning, I, it, is that also like, you know, that's, um, menopause right. symptoms too? And right, right. And the brain fog or just mental fogginess. And this mm -hmm. is where the B vitamins again help. And then a okay. little bit of often will help with that brain fog too. Because with okay. the drop in levels there, we, you know, they may have new um, depression or just um, increased depression. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's for I like the B vitamins and just a little bit of estradiol. Okay. Now, is that a cream or would you say a pill? What suppository? <laughs> when you say right. Okay. There's different ways. Suppositories, there's trophies where you dissolve it into the tongue, there's patches and there's cream. Those are mm -hmm. the ways that probably more commonly administered. And yes. with, well, that's a prescription and this is where we do a testing first and then we'll go ahead and prescribe. Okay. And what kind of testing do you do? Um, do you do uh, spit testing, blood test? Um, how do you, how do you test? test? Yeah, I'm I like sorry. To do blood, blood test. Blood. Okay. 
So, so Dr. Kelly, do you also do like, I, I just want to clarify like Dutch testing, like what the process would be, you will do the testing and then kind of prescribe the herbs or if someone uh, uh, understand, you know, where the hormone imbalance is, is that the process from your side? Right. I usually do blood tests. I know some of my colleagues like to do the Dutch testing and the Dutch testing is very, yeah. it's very detailed and you, you sound like you're familiar with it, where it tells mm -hmm. you the path. So it doesn't just tell you what your estradiol level is, <clears throat> what your estrogen level is. It tells you what's happening to that estrogen as it's being metabolized. And that is important mm -hmm. too, because there's um, some women will have these, what we call gene snips, where the estrogen is going in the wrong direction. And that's why they're having these terrible symptoms. And so, or we may uh, give them a, we give them estrogen, but we're finding out why isn't it working? So then we might do the Dutch test to see, okay, what's happening here? Okay. Um, and that's the other thing I had another question, but, um, I just forgot it. Just this, like, you know, uh, eight, I don't like the term aging brain and stuff like that, but I just noticed lately I'm just forgetting things. Like I had a, another great question for you. Now I can't remember it, you know? You can always reach out to me too. I don't know if my contact information is on there, but you can always just reach out, reach out to me, Kim Kelly, okay. and then I have the doctor here in Antigua. Yeah, yeah, reach out to Leslie. Uh, he, uh, you know that that's why we are, we are just bringing these informational educational sessions on a daily basis to help people like yourself and uh, millions of women out there. So please feel free to reach out to him. He'll help you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because I, I don't. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say one of the things with perimenopause is these symptoms can last anywhere from one year all the way up to 10 years. That's the perimenopause yeah. stage. And so, of course, it's no fun. And that's where you come and see me and say, what can I do to help minimize the symptoms or just help me to feel like I'm back to normal again? Right. Yes, I didn't have any symptoms. You know, I didn't know I went through it. Um, but now I do at 60, you know, I'm, it's the, the brain, the fatigue, the feeling beige, you know, and not excited about life anymore. You know, it's not like, um, uh, I don't know. I think it is definitely hormonal. <laughs> uh, like it's hormonal. And what's interesting, so for in your case, your transition was more smooth when you're going through the perimenopause. Yeah. And now your body's starting to tell you, hey, there's been a change in hormones. And yep. so one, one of the, the protocols though for bioidentical hormones is if a woman has not been on hormones or bioidentical hormones after 10 years of onset of menopause, then we don't give bioidentical hormones. We just strictly adhere to That's diet, what I heard. nutrition, herbs. But luckily there's a lot out there to help with that. And usually, and one thing I would recommend is B vitamins because we know that helps with cognition. Yeah. This is a good blend of B vitamins right. would be work better. Again, it's a right. synergy one. Right. Okay, and, and, and uh, how much is this uh, is uh, connected to adrenal function now that the ovaries aren't, well, you know, they went on vacation. It's all related because the adrenals, we call that the shock absorber of the body. It's the center of the wheel. And then spike that comes out, one is goes through the sex hormones, one affects the thyroid, one is the immune system, neurotransmitters, our mood. I mean, I don't want to say the adrenals is everything, but it's the shock absorber of the body and it handles a lot yeah. as far as hormones. Yeah. So I know one of the questions was, what can you do to help the, the sex balance the sex hormones? And so one was through diet, but also focusing on the adrenal glands. And that's why I like cordyceps. I like ashwagandha. I like licorice. And that's as long as the blood pressure is good because they help the mm -hmm. adrenals and it's, then they can help the sex hormones. And then with the drop in estrogen, then it really does affect thyroid. And so mm -hmm. many times we also have to look at the thyroid, to whether it be because of weight gain, energy, or they just want a little, oof, little wind in their sail. Yeah, that's it the wind and the sail. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's all related. That was a good question. It's the thyroid, the adrenals, and then of course the sex hormones. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Well, uh, thank you. I hope, yeah, I hope it's useful for you because we had, tell all your friends and, and uh, uh, you know, we do these sessions on a daily basis. These are educational sessions to help. Um, and uh, please, you're welcome to reach out to Dr. Kelly. And then we are also launching some self-care programs in the first of the year. So if you share your information, if you don't mind, I can get your feedback when what we are launching would would that be of useful for you or not? So I would appreciate that. Your feedback yes. is very important for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelly. I really appreciate it. This is a real client today who, who we found. So I uh, really appreciate you going through this very patiently. And uh, this is not a medical advice. I'm saying that one more time. Just an educational session we brought today. And we were talking about hormone imbalance for menopausal women or perimenopausal women. Anything else you'd like to add before I wrap up? Oh, I just want to let women know there is hope. I know many times when they're going through these you know, perimenopause years or postmenopause, they just feel like, oh, I'm just not the same. You know, life just seems more dull now. But this is where, you know what, there is hope. And there's a lot we can do. And you know, one of the best ways is actually just through diets and then some supplementation. And my theory is less is more. So I do my best not to overwhelm them with so many supplements, but enough where it can help them and then bioidentical hormones. So there's hope out there. Yes, absolutely. And that's exactly what I wanted to say. There is hope out there. Don't make your body into a supplement herbal uh, factory inside without consulting with a naturopathic doctor or someone that uh, you're an expert in this field. That's all I wanted to make sure because people say, oh, I can now start taking black cohosh, ashwagandha and all kinds of things. And they can do all, you know, you don't know what is going to react inside. So expert opinion is very important to your point. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks again. Keep supporting us. We keep bringing these programs on a daily basis. Namaste. Thank you so much.